Good afternoon and welcome back. In this video, we're going to take a look at flow templates in Surface Now. All right, so we're going to look at um, flow template builder in Surface Now. So today we're going to set it up, right? So we're going to make sure we've got the the right plugins and we're going to create a flow template. I'm going to do another video where we consume that template because there are kind of two aspects to it. There's the setup, let's create a flow template, and then the let's use it and who uses it and why do they use it. Now, in order to set it up, it is a plugin, Flow Template Builder, and I'll show you that in a second. There are pre prerequisites to that, so you're going to need App Engine Studio, and we're also going to need Integration Hub as well. So you need to install those, then go on to the plugin as well. If we just quickly whiz over to the plugin itself, um, you can see, again, I've already installed this. I don't want you to go through the pain of me finding it and clicking install. Instead, you can go through the pain of listening to me talk about it. Boring. <laughs> now, the idea is here. Um, go ahead and, and, and copy that down if you need to. Now, it does say paid. How much does that cost, I hear you ask? I don't know. Um, I'm not an account representative. I would suggest you speak to your account rep um, at ServiceNow. Um, if you do know about the licensing on, on whether it's included with App Engine Studio, um, drop a, a, a you know a note in the comments. Or even if you'd like to do a video, just you and I, and we talk about licensing, um, maybe we can sort something out in 2030 or 2040 or something like that. Um, until then, let's continue. Continue. So I've already gone ahead and I've created the um, I've created. I've done two things actually. I've installed the plugin and I've also put a jumper on because I did notice I was wearing a brown top and it didn't look quite right on the video. So we've done that as well. <laughs> let's stop mucking about and let's go into Flow Designer. So if we go over to my old friend Flow Designer, if you're new to the channel, you will know um, that I'm a huge fan of Flow Designer um, and I do talk about it quite a lot. Um, check some videos out in there. They're all interesting, I promise. So now we're in Flow Designer. Uh, I, I'm going to point these out first. So what we're used to seeing, and in fact, actually, I'm going to put my glasses on as well. Um, I don't usually wear glasses because this, uh, the light that I've got here shines in there, and you can just see this uh, gets quite distracting, um, almost as distracting as my waffle, um, but tough. So in here, you've, you're used to seeing things like flows, subflows, actions, executions. Now I've installed the plugin, we have templates. So if we click in here, this is where we'd expect to see any of the templates that we've um, created. We haven't created any, there isn't any. So how do we create one? So we go into a flow. So let's pick any flow. I'm gonna pick this collaboration request flow just because it sounds quite interesting. So now what we can do is we've got this flow, right? Let's just pretend we've created this from scratch and we've done all the fancy stuff. And we've got our set flow variables, we've got our trigger, we've got our actions within it. What we can do now is we go to the right hand side, and we got this new option that says save flow as template. So if we click that, that will save this flow as a, a template. Um, anyway, <laughs> what, we want, what we need to do here is give it a template name. Now give it something sensible. So whoever's consuming this, so and citizen developers, for example, they know what to look for when they're consuming it. So let, let's just give it template. Templates, let's give, does that sound sensible? Next thing we can do is pick an application. Again, this is a consideration that you need to make. These things are often, all these considerations like what's your naming convention and application are often more difficult than the technical um, aspect itself, right? You know, policy and procedure, all the boring stuff that us devs just want to ignore and get on with life. Um, but unfortunately we, we can't. So we need to think about what application to put this in. So, you know, it may be an application that we build specific for templates, perhaps. It may be contain we want to put it in an application that the citizen developer perhaps owns or manages. But you need to think about this. For the purpose of this, we're going to go global. And then, again, this is what I do like about ServiceNow, is they try and be as, I mean, it sounds obvious, but they try and be as helpful as they possibly can to help us use and consume the tool in the right way. So it actually tells us how it works so you know you can select the trigger and action and inputs um, you know we, we create this 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 flow behind um that plugin we could have changed some of the actions right we could have added some actions in there and then save it as template um, 
we then create template variables to store um, user input as flow data. We can pre-configure. You know, but, but it's really helpful um, that they give you this these data uh, details here. So we go here. We'll just click save. Okay, and this has now created our flow template. So now we've created our flow template. Um, the one thing I'll, I'll, I want to point out here, right, really important. Top right here, you've got um, the view. Now it says flow. If you drop that down, now we've created our template, we can go into template setup. This is where the magic happens, people. So if we look in the top left, well, you can't, can my, um, if we look in the top left, when I move out of the way, this is where we can go into these actions. And I like this view, by the way. You know, it's layered and it makes, uh, it makes it a lot easier on the eye to follow, right? But in here, this is where we can say, hey, we've created this flow as a template. We want to use this default value all the time. Or we can select something like uh, collect new user input. So we can select that. And then in here, this is where we can add a field label or make it mandatory and what the default value is. We can even put a hint is, I know, perhaps put some stuff in here maybe. And if we just click save, so now that we've done that, we notice that our trigger has actually changed to use that template variable, right? And this, you know, we can see it here on the right hand side. This is something that we can uh, then access from a consumer point of view and, and um, pass in that variable. So if we just go back to, and I'll, I'll show you what that means. So if we just pick pass, um, pass, if we go back to the flow view, I'm just going to click that. Now we can see on the right hand side, we had template variables before. Now that was empty. Now we've got something in it. Now we've got the type um, and I guess the, the variable um, for the templates, the template variables, but they're here now. OK, so now what we can do is go ahead and activate this. We can create many um, template variables, not just one, by the way. We can do as many as we like um, in that template setup view. Um, but for the purpose of this, we're just going to create one because I just want to show you the concepts. And I'm a big fan of here are the concepts. Don't be afraid. Go into PDI and just have a play and get um, get involved with it. OK, so now what we're going to do is just click activate. And click activate here. And this might take a while. Always takes a while. In fact, I'm going to go for a run. Are we back? Are we finished? Yeah, is it finished yet? Hey, that's finished and I'm a bit fitter as well. Bonus, well done service now. So now we've got that saved, we've created our template flow. And I've briefly shown you around flow templates um, or template variables, sorry. So if we go back to our home page and we go back to this section here that if you remember before was empty, we now have our um, template that we created before. So in the next video, what we're gonna do is, is go a bit further we're going to start using those and I might expand them, I might add some more stuff or create another template flow for the purpose of the demo. So as always, I hope you found this useful, even if it's a year down the line from when I'm making this, you find it useful. If I, if I find one person that has looked at this and taken one thing away from it, it makes it worth it for me. If you haven't yet subscribed, please consider doing so. It does make a massive difference with all the YouTube algorithms. If you have subscribed, haven't yet smashed the bell icon or hit a thumbs up, like, please do it. And then you'll get notified when I upload videos just like this one. Until the next time, this is Service Nerd. I've been Russ. Happy low coding.